Hi everyone, I'm Rachel with Limbo's product team. Today, we'll be talking about cycle counts. Cycle counts give you a structure to quickly and easily audit your inventory to ensure you always have parts on hand. This video will teach you how to set up and configure cycle counts, complete a cycle count, and view and report changes in your part inventory. Depending on your permissions and plan with Limbal, some of your screens may be different than mine. If you have any questions, reach out to our support team. Let's get started. Let's talk about how to set up and configure cycle counts. Navigate to the Manage Parts page. Click Cycle Counts, then select Configure from the dropdown. In the new window, click Add Cycle Count Schedule. You'll create your cycle count by setting a schedule, configuring the task, and choosing any desired advanced settings. First, set the cycle count schedule. You can choose from daily, weekly, monthly, or annual schedules. In this example, I'll run a cycle count every three months on the first Friday of the month. You will select when the cycle count will start and can select an end date if desired. Then click Save to continue. Next, configure the cycle count task. Here, you'll determine how many parts you want to count, how the count will be divided, and who is assigned to the task. First, choose how many parts you want to count. By default, this is 100. To change the count, click on the blue text. Enter a value in the text field or select your entire part inventory by selecting All. In this example, I will count 100 parts. Next, choose how the cycle count will be broken up. I will enter 25 in this field. Since I am counting a total of 100 parts and I want to break up my cycle count by 25 parts per task, Limbo will batch 25 parts into four separate tasks since 25 times four brings me to a total of 100 parts. You can only count a maximum of 500 parts in a single task. We recommend splitting counts into smaller, more bite-sized sections for more accurate counting. It's important to note that if you configure a cycle count that does not count all parts or is not filtered by any part fields, the system will go by last counted data and then by the location field so that all parts will be added to a cycle count task eventually. Next, select a user or team who will perform the cycle count. Click the blue text and choose a user or team in the new window. The last set of options to configure your cycle count is advanced settings. You can include or exclude parts from your cycle count based on part field data. Expand your options by clicking the cog icon. The first variable is include exclude. Click the blue text to choose between include or exclude to add or remove specific parts to a cycle count based on their field data. I want to include parts in my cycle count group A. We recommend creating a cycle count group field to categorize parts that are used most frequently to least frequently. The field can be used as a filter to schedule frequent cycle counts for parts that are used on a more regular basis and schedule fewer or less frequent cycle counts for parts that are used less often. In this example, I'll choose Include. Next, click Select Field to choose the field you want to filter by. Choose the field from the expanded list of options. Use the search field if you need to look for it. In this example, I'll choose the Cycle Count Group field. Finally, enter a value for the field. I'll enter A as a field value in this example. You can layer additional filters from here. I only want to include parts that are located in aisle seven of my warehouse. I'll add another filter and keep include selected. Then I'll select part location as my field. In the field, I'll enter aisle seven. This cycle count will now include parts in cycle count group A that are located in aisle seven of my warehouse. It's important to note that you cannot create two filters with the same field and different field values. For example, if I wanted to include parts with B as their cycle count group or parts located in aisle eight, I would need to create a different cycle count since the cycle count group and part location fields are already in use here. Once you have configured your desired settings, turn on the cycle count using the toggle icon and your tasks will be generated based on the schedule. You can manually trigger a cycle count by clicking Start Cycle Count. Let's look at a cycle count task. Here, you can see each part is its own individual instruction to complete. You will see the current part quantity calculated in Limbal in parentheses. Parts update in real time. 
If a part is consumed in another task, the number will be updated here. However, if more units are received in a PO, the cycle count may overwrite the received inventory. Manual cycle counts are always considered the source of truth. We recommend that cycle counts be coordinated with purchases or other team members who receive parts so that the existing inventory can be counted accurately. Enter the part quantity in the field. When the task is completed, the part quantities for these parts will be updated. You can view and report the changes to your inventory in multiple ways. You can view cycle count tasks or specific part logs to see any manual adjustments that result from a cycle count. On the Manage Parts page, click Cycle Counts and select View from the dropdown. In the new window, the recent cycle counts will be listed. You can click on any task to see the part quantities entered. You can also look at changes to part quantities for specific parts by going to the Part Log, click on your desired part. From the Part Guard, click on the Log tab. You can view all activity on the part from here. To look at manual changes to part quantities, filter by type, and select Manual Update Quantity from the dropdown. You can also filter by date if desired. Thanks so much for watching. If you have additional questions, visit our Help Center or reach out to our support team to learn more.